Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be packed with new techniques you can add to your workflow. We're going to start by creating a closed simulation and I will show you different ways to do it. For the first time, we will dive deeper into the world nodes. We're going to use a HDRI background and I will give you some really cool links to download them. We will create two different materials. I'll show you three different techniques on how to mix them. That's dope knowledge and you can take that away with you in your next project. Make sure you get that espresso shot in. Let's go. Close simulation is a way to generate meshes using real life dynamics. Let's start by creating a very simple one. I'm going to add a plane using Shift A, Mesh, Plane. I'm going to scale that to 2, S2, bring that up. I'm going to add a sphere, Shift A, Mesh, UV sphere. I'm actually going to scale that plane again, S4. That plane right now is pretty low res, so I'm going to add some subdivision. Edit, right click, subdivide, and go to 20. It's still pretty low res, so I'm going to add a modifier, subdivision surface. For what it's worth, those two actions are the same. Using a modifier will help me keep it parametric. I'm going to go to 2. Let's add some physics. I'm going to click on the sphere and go to physics properties and I'm going to make it a collider. I'm going to click on my plane and this time I'm going to make it close. There's a lot of parameters you can play with. But there's also some interesting presets and I'm going to use cotton. Let's try to hit play. Congrats. That was your first close simulation. Let's roll it back and let's change a few things. First, the size. I don't need it to be that big, so I'm going to put that to four. Second, I'm going to apply scale, control A, scale. I'm going to go back to my physics properties and tweak a few things. I'm going to start by clicking self collision. I'm going to increase the quality to six and I'm going to add 10 steps. Let's try again. Everything looks pixelated, so we're going to do two things. The first one is going to shade smooth and the second one is move down the subdivision surface. We're still going to need a subdivision modifier before the close modifier. We can keep it to one. Let's try to make that a little bit more complicated. We actually want to stack some of those clothes to create some nice folds. Go to the side view, select the plane, and let's start duplicating it. Now let's add a plane, S10, and we're going to make that plane a collider. Bring down the plane, and we're going to duplicate the sphere too. There's a lot of geometry and colliders involved. To help with the computer calculation, we'll do a few things. The first one is going to be to join all of those planes. Control the planes, select the last one and hit Control J. Let's do the same thing for the spheres. Select all the spheres, Control J. Let's add a solidify modifier to the planes, increase the thickness and move it back before the subdivision. If you hit play, everything is going to be very slow because there's a lot of geometry involved. Even though the simulation is pretty slow, it's actually quite useful. We're gonna do something called caching. Go back to the physics tab, scroll down, cache, 70 frames. We're gonna click bake. This is running the simulations math in the background without updating the viewport. Once the animation is cached, you can find a frame that you like, add some material, place a camera, and you can get really cool frames out of that. Let's try another simulation setup. Shift A, add a plane, RX 90 SZ 30, move up, edit mode, control R, mouse wheel scroll up, click, escape, go back to the menu and add 100, go to the modifier, add a solidify modifier, increase the thickness, now go back to the physics properties, add cloth, click on the plane, add collision, increase friction, on this plane increase quality steps to 10, increase the tension and compression to 30, shear to 10, and bending to 5, scroll down to collision, enable self collision, increase the quality to 5, play the animation. Right click on the ribbon, shade smooth, go back to the modifier tab, add modifier, subdivision surface, increase to 3. So that's a pretty simple setup. You can try to change some values, increase the size of the ribbon. Like the first project, you can move around your camera, find an angle that you like and generate some pretty cool frames out of that. Let's use the same principle to create a new simulation. I'm going to add a plane, RX 90 S5. I'm going to need more subdivision, so I'm going to hit tab, right click, subdivide. In this menu, I'm going to type 10, control A. S, add modifier. I'm going to start by a solidify modifier. I'm going to increase the thickness, then add a array modifier. I don't want that to be on the X, so I'm going to reset that to zero, but I want that to be on the Z axis, so I'm going to increase the value. I'm also going to increase the count to eight. Duplicate the setup with Shift T and Escape because you don't want to move. Let's add that to a new collection using the 
M, new collection. I'm going to apply the modifiers, select the plane, modifiers, apply and apply. Right click, set origin, geometry to origin. Now everything is right in the middle. Let's look at the geo. That's not going to be enough for the simulation. Let's add a subdivision surface. Now let's go to the physics tab and hit cloth. The simulation is not going to do much if I hit play. The only force that is applied is the gravity and we don't want that. Go to the scene properties, uncheck gravity, enable the menu, shift A, and in force field there's a few of them we can use. The one that I use the most are force, wind, and turbulence. There's a few ways to come up with those simulations. The first one is created from scratch, add some plane, add some physics, simulate and see where it goes. It is quite a hit and miss process. The other way to do it is find inspiration online. If you search on YouTube for Blender Close Simulation, you can find videos that you can use as a boilerplate. For today, this is a mix of things I found online and iterated on myself. Let's add some dynamics. Shift A, force field, force. I'm gonna set that to line and minus 30. I'm using a negative value because I want this force field to bring the close inside. I'm gonna add some noise. I'm gonna rotate the force to introduce something a little bit more natural. I'm gonna finish by scaling it using S. Now I'm gonna introduce another force field called turbulence. Shift A, force field, turbulence. I'm gonna set the shape to line. I'm gonna increase the strength to 20 and I'm gonna add some noise. I'm gonna scale it and rotate randomly. There's a lot of geometry so I'm gonna use the cache. Select your plane, go to the physics properties, scroll down. One last thing before caching the simulation is enabling self collisions and I'm going to increase the quality. I'm not gonna run the simulation to the frame 250 but instead I'm gonna do it to the frame 40. Slide this modifier under the cloth and I'm gonna bake. Depending on your computer this can be a slow process. Process. Let's play the animation and right click shade smooth. So now we're getting the folds we are interested in. This is something we can work with. I'm going to tweak the force strength and bake more frames. Let's play that back. Looks like there's enough frames to work with. Now let's talk about HDRIs. Go to the corner of the window, click and drag to the right. Click on the icon and select Shader Editor. Someone mentioned the nodes in the comments, so let me talk about it. Nodes are operations that are represented as blocks or as nodes. You can use them in different places in Blender, for example, in the Shader Editor. The only place we're gonna use them today are in the Material Editor. Let's talk about the Shader Editor for a second. There are three shader types, Object, World, and Line Style. Object is gonna be localized to all of the shapes we have in our scene, while the World View is gonna take care of everything we see in the scene. Let's click on it. In this window, let's activate the viewport shading. I'm gonna tweak that color here and you're gonna understand a little bit better what that means. The background node is going to control everything that is mapped around the scene. So if I change that color here, the really cool thing is we can add more nodes or more operation before the background node. What we want today is a HDRI. So what we need is a image environment node. Shift A, S, E, N, V, environment texture. Make sure you have the node wrangler add-on activated. Control T, plug that to the color, and I'm gonna look for a HDRI. I love using Studio HDRIs as a baseline. This pack is actually free and I'm gonna put a link in the description. Let's pick one. If I move around the scene, you can see that the HDRI is actually applied and mapped spherically around the scene. But I think the image in the background is actually a little bit annoying. Let's go into render properties, film, transparent. Now let's move on to the object. Now I'm gonna set up my camera. And let's try to find a cool angle. And remember that you have a whole simulation cached with a lot of frame you can use. I like this one for now. Our background is transparent and we can add color back. There's two ways to add one. The first one is going to be using Photoshop in post-production. We can leverage the alpha channel to add any kind of color. The other way is to add a plane in the background. Shift A, plane, or X90, S10. So I am going to rotate my plane to face the camera. Go back to Shader View. Click on the shape, new. There's a few ways to tweak your material. You can use this panel here. I use it to quickly access the top level settings or using the shader nodes, which is gonna give you more control. This one is gonna be a banger. We're gonna cover a lot of topics today. Let's create a mixed shader. It's two materials that we're gonna mix together using different parameters. So this one is gonna be our first material. I'm gonna click Shift D to create a second one. Shift A, search, mix, shader. I'm gonna plug this to the second shader and the first one to the first one. I'm 
gonna move that a little bit. I'm gonna temporarily change the colors, red and green. Right now, the mix shader is mixing 50% of the first shader and 50% of the second shader. So that's why we have this weird color. If I move more on the left, it will use the first shader and the right, the second shader. Let me introduce three techniques to mix those two shaders together. Hang on, it's pretty dope. The first one is Fresnel. Shift A, S, F, E, R, Fresnel. I'm gonna immediately add a color ramp. I'm gonna plug the factor and I'm gonna use Control, Shift, left click to preview the node. In general, I'm, I just wanna crank my levels a little bit. Fresnel is actually a well-known algorithm. It computes how much light is reflected off the layer. If you don't know who Augustin Fresnel is, Look it up. Now I'm gonna plug that color ramp to the factor, plug the mix shader to the surface. Hopefully that speaks for itself. The cool thing with that is you can use the IOR, index of refraction, to tweak the colors. The second technique is using the layer weight. Shift A, S, layer weight. I'm gonna duplicate the color ramp and I'm gonna control shift left click. The layer weight has two outputs. The first one is the Fresnel, which we just used, and the second one is facing. Let's try it. I'm gonna plug that to factor and plug that back to the surface. The magic actually happens when you start rotating the camera around. The third option and the one we're gonna use for this project is a noise texture. Shift A, search, noise. Texture. Control T to add the mapping and the texture coordinate and duplicate the color ramp. Shift T. Factor into factor and Control Shift left click. Let's get out of the camera real quick so you can see exactly what it does to the general shape. The noise texture is a procedural texture that you can use for a lot of use cases. The really nice thing about it is you have a lot of control around the scale so you can make it smaller or bigger. You can have more or less details and you can also have some distortion to it. All of these parameters makes this node very flexible. For today, we're gonna set that to one. We're not gonna have any detail. We're gonna crunch the blacks and the whites and play with the scale. Let's reconnect the mix shader. You can still use Control Shift and left click. Plug the color ramp to the factor and now you can see what's happening. The black is the first shader and the white is the second shader. Let's focus on the first material now. Control Shift click. For the first material, I want something quite glossy, a little bit rough, but I want to add some details. I want to introduce some dots and I want those dots to be very reflective and we will use the metallic input for that. First, let's generate some dots. Let's introduce another procedural texture. It is the Voronoi texture. Control shift click, Control T, and I'm going to map that to the object. And this is the kind of pattern that Voronoi is generating. There's a lot of ways to customize it. So we can see there's some dots, but there's also other data we don't really like. I'm going to use that color ramp, shift T, drag here. Now I'm starting to see those dots a little bit more, but I need to crank my white from linear to constant. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to work on the scale. What I actually want is use this data to mix two colors together. To do that, we're going to introduce a new node called mix. In Blender 3.4, this node changed a little bit, so we need to switch that to color. Let's use our data as a factor. Let's put a color in A and another color in B. Now it's quite clear what's happening. The black dots will be a mask or a factor and will turn red and the white will turn blue. So this is something we can use as a, our base color now. I don't like those colors, so let's tweak that. I'm going to leverage something we learned in the previous chapter, which is using a color palette. I want my material to be pink and I want my dots to be white. I can probably play with the roughness a little bit. The other thing I want to do here is use the dots to make them metallic and very shiny. I don't think we work with the metallic channel yet. Let me introduce a really simple noise texture with a color ramp. I'm going to crank my values real hard. This is how the metallic channel works. Everything that is white will be very metallic, very shiny, and everything that is black, it's not going to be metallic. Let's use the dots color data we have here to drive how metallic that surface is. And if I pre the material it is actually the opposite and so there's a really cool note to do that called invert. I'm gonna plug that note here. We have what we were looking for. So with one really simple texture we can actually drive many things basically reusing a mask over and over again in Photoshop. That's the first material. Let's focus on the second one. For the second material, we're going to learn about another procedural texture and a new node called Bump. Bump and Normal are a way to fake displacement without actually creating new geometry or displacing the geometry. We're going to need a Bump node. I'm going to plug the Normal to the Normal. The only thing you need to know, you need to input black and white values into the Bump node. The black and white data will drive how much the material is pushed up or recessed. 
I actually want to have a grid pattern, which is a great segue to introduce another procedural texture, the brick nodes. Let's add a brick texture, plug that to the vector. Let's use the UV coordinate, pretty self-explanatory. I'm more looking for a grid pattern, so we need to tweak the brick texture node. For the frequency, I'm gonna set that to one, so I have even grid. I'm gonna tweak the colors too. I want square, so I need the brick width and the row height to be equal. So they need to be the same value. I can do it manually or I can introduce another interesting node which is called value. I can plug that to the width and the height and set that to one. I'm gonna turn the bias to one and I'm gonna lower the motor size to 0.01 and I'm gonna turn the motor smoothness to zero. And the last thing I wanna work on is the scale. Let's go 60. I don't really like what's happening here. It is due to the UV mapping. There's different ways to fix that, but I'm gonna cheat it. I'm gonna use some rotation. Let's plug back the material. Let's pick a different color. I like it. I wanna create more contrast between the two materials. The first one is quite glossy and look a little bit similar. So maybe let's introduce some glass. Increase transmission, reduce roughness. And now let's mix those two materials together. Go back to the mix shader, control shift click. So it's working. Kind of looks like a cow right now, so let's fix the factor. Let's reduce the scale, so it will help reduce the visual clutter of the image. I like to take some time to step back and call out the things that I want to fix. The first obvious one to me is the glass shader. Everything is black and I want that to be translucent. The second thing that I want to tweak is the light. Everything is kind of blown out. It's hard to focus on one area of interest. And the last part is going to be the frame and the camera. I'm now going to do all of those tweaks and iterations, so I'm going to speed up the video. Here's the render I ended up with. Now is your turn, so try different colors, different angles, different kind of lights, different HDRIs. There is so much parameters to play with that the solution are endless. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the comment below because it's always interesting to learn about the community. Obviously, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel, that's always helpful and see you in the next one.